Good afternoon, family. Um, wanted to post this post before I get into this other sermon I'm going to share from this morning's study with the Lord. But this is part two of the right state of mind. We're going to talk about King Nebuchadnezzar who had a dream. And in this dream, it was told about him taking the credit for what God has done through him. And a lot of times people take credit for what God has done for them, in them, through them, and by them. So we're going to we're going to find out what what he did before we tap into this right state of mind and believe it or not I'm really focusing this right state of mind on pastors and preachers and ministers and people in leadership because a lot of times those positions become prideful those positions become controlling and the bible tells us we shouldn't be controlling we shouldn't lord over nobody because in, I believe it's Galatians or Philippians, God says that it is he that wills in us to perform these things that he's calling us to do. So let's get into it. Um, Daniel chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 30. The king spake and said, is, it, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? And for the honor of my majesty, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee I spoken, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee. They're talking about seven years. Seven times shall pass over thee until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he wills. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did not and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew from heaven till his hair was grown like an eagle's feathers and his nails like the birds of the claws of a bird which you have to understand and we all need to really get this and i say this quite often that we are not the ones preaching we are not the ones teaching we are not the ones that lays hand on the sick and, and heals them We've been given a power through the Holy Spirit that belongs to God. Whenever one is building a ministry, whenever one is um, doing, doing great things in the name of Jesus, what you have to understand is that God is doing all this through you. God has given you favor. God has allowed this ministry to grow. God has allowed this business to grow. Because the person that's doing this is being faithful to God, realizing that he's not doing this in his own strength. Jesus said, without me, you could do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. So what happened with King Nebuchadnezzar was he got prideful. He thought and believed that it was him that built this great kingdom, that it was him that had all these things marked out with the beauty. He he didn't do none of that. God had allowed this to happen to him. He had given a favor, but God also warned him. And a lot of us get warned through the spirit, through, you know, our, our elders, through our pastors that, you know, God is trying to get our attention. Like, hold on, don't you get prideful. Don't get boastful. How can you boast on something? You didn't give yourself nothing. We seem to fail to forget that God has given us wisdom. God has given us ideas. God has done all these things in our minds. You know, if you go back a hundred years, things that we have now, including this cell phone, this iPhone that we're using, God gave someone the ability to be able to come up with this thought, with this idea, how to take a phone that we once had a rotary phone where you had to turn the dial and 
You have to go through all these things just to get the person on the other end to answer. Look at now I'm doing a sermon, a teaching on a cell phone. These things are things that God has allowed man to do. And we're not to boast in what we think we've done because God has given us the ability. But by the grace of God, when God, it's like in, uh, it's like in, in Luke chapter 21, which I spoke before, verse 31 and 32, when he humbled Peter, Peter then understood that it wasn't him that was doing all these things. Even in the books of Act, in the book of Acts, he said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give to you freely because it was freely given to me. It is not my power that is doing healing. It is not my power that is doing the giving sight to the blind. It's the power of Jesus Christ working through me. And that's why the Bible says to those when they say, Lord, did we not cast demons out in your name? Did we not heal the sick? Did we not do all these things? And Jesus said, get away from me. You, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness, you was prideful. You was doing this for yourself. You wasn't doing this to glorify God, to glorify Jesus, to glorify the kingdom of heaven. And a lot of times we get caught up taking God's glory. We can't take God's glory. He, it, That's why he sits us down. That's why we get put in, in, in a humble state of mind. But God is so gracious, right? Just like yesterday when I was talking about the prodigal son, when he was in the pig's pen, it says when he came to his right state of mind. So check out what happens to Nebuchadnezzar. So verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted mine eyes upon heaven and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whom, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of of the earth. Get, I want you to get that. Catch that. First of all, when Nebuchadnezzar came to his understanding, he then realized who God was. But then it says in verse 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he, God, doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? It is God. It's always been God. But when Nebuchadnezzar came to his right state of mind and his understanding was returned to him, he humbled himself. You pastors out there that are trying to lord over the church who are trying to control how people get saved and, and and controlling you know when they need to praise it is all about jesus and we are just vessels being used to transfer the word of god to people so people who are being prideful god will bring you low and when we get low we come to this thought in our mind like who am i Job said, who am I? He understood when God told him, where was you when I laid the foundations of the sea? Where was you when I marked out the stars in the heaven? Where were you? And Job realized who he was, who he was. He was nothing. So we have to get to our right state of mind and realize that it is God working in us, through us, by us, and for us. He is the one that's in control of everything, right? And what I mean by he's in control of everything is that if we belong to him, then he is responsible for us because we're following him. So he says all things work together for the good of those to the good of those who love him, Romans 8 28. So we have to submit to what he is calling us to do. And a lot of times we 
get out of our right state of mind. We get prideful. We get arrogant. Don't get that way. Don't get that way. You did not save you. Jesus saved you. You're not transforming you. you the Holy Spirit is. He's the one that's inside of you working all things out to the glory of God. So what this is really saying about these right state of minds is that we need to stay in our right state of mind. We need to stay humble. We need to stay prayerful. We need to understand that it's God that's doing all these things. Nebuchadnezzar got prideful. God, excuse me, had blessed him with a really fine kingdom. But what Nebuchadnezzar did was he took his eyes off of himself, and off of God and put it on himself. That's what the devil did. The devil's destruction was he wanted to become like God. He took his eyes off of the creator and put his eyes on himself. So whenever we put our eyes on ourselves, we are automatically out of our minds because we're thinking we're in control of everything and we could do whatever we want, say whatever we want, go wherever we want. No, you can't. If you're not doing this God's way, if you're not in your right state of mind focusing that you need God to do all these things, he will take stuff from you. He will remove it out the way. Let me correct myself when I say he will take it from you because a lot of people get caught up and I'm going to preach on that later on today about that whole thing about God doesn't take stuff from us. He will allow the devil to step in and do stuff. But the Bible says that God doesn't, he doesn't give and take back. And you need to really understand that um, in, in the Old Testament and Job, he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord allowed the enemy to get in there and do what he did, but God never took nothing. And what the devil took, get this, God replaced a hundredfold. So when Nebuchadnezzar was shot down because of his pride, when he got restored and it got put back in his right state of mind, this is for somebody. You may have had a lot of stuff taken from you. It might have been because of you that it was taken away. But God's grace will restore to you what you lost because of your pride, because of your arrogance, because of yourself, because of you focusing on self. God is so good. That's when he says all things work together for good. You may not get back exactly what you lost, but God will restore to you just like he did Nebuchadnezzar when he came back to his right state of mind. God restored the kingdom back to him. Maybe God is trying to get some of you men to get in your right state of mind to restore your family to you. Maybe he's trying to get some of you sisters out there to get back in the right state of mind in the right place so that God can put your family back together and have you be submissive to your husband as your husband is submissive to God. Maybe these children that are out there running amok is because things are disorderly in the house. So I don't know if this would really help you today, but like I said, it was focusing on the right state of mind part two because we need to be in our right state of mind before God humbles us because he says he will raise us up in due season. And some of you may be on a, um, a error going back to something you've lost. You may have a good business deal coming. You may have the perfect mate coming, but you had to be humbled enough so God wouldn't give you this new promotion, this new husband, this new wife, this new ministry that would have took you and made you prideful instead of made you humble. So Lord, I pray that this word has encouraged somebody to stay humble under the mighty hand of God, to not be prideful, to not be arrogant, but to come back into their right state of mind as Nebuchadnezzar did, to have things restored to him and to her. In Jesus' name, amen.